Hey everybody, Mike Sullivan here. 2020 is in the rear view mirror. And I wanted to think about something that would be, you know, encouraging, not just for this week, but for the year ahead. And I was, you know, as I was thinking through different, different things that would be an encouragement, uh, I couldn't think of anything better than what Christ says in John 14, 14. He says, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is just an incredible encouragement and promise that he lays out. This is basically a promise if we pray together, and that's what the you ask is. It's, he's assuming a group of people coming together. And if we pray in agreement, obviously, if we're praying for something together, there's the, the, the implication is that we agree about what we're praying for. So if we come together in agreement and we pray about things that God wants, this would be the meaning of in my name, not some magical incantation that we spread like, like icing over whatever prayer we have to get what we want. But, you know, we're coming together in agreement to God, asking him to do his will. Jesus promises that when we do that, he says he will respond. He will respond. And I, man... You just look ahead at just all the different things that we could potentially face. Knowing that this is true is super encouraging. I don't know if you've ever heard of the, uh, the monument that's at Williams College, Massachusetts. This was erected uh, a while back to commemorate uh, a prayer meeting. I think this is the only monument I'm aware of that actually looks back to a prayer meeting and just kind of marks what happened because of it. In 1806, a bunch of college students from Williams College were running home in a thunderstorm. And it was the storm was getting worse as they ran, and so they hid out in a haystack. That's what this is right here. They literally dug into a mound of hay. And they, they climbed in there, and they, they were like, well, we got to wait out the storm. What should we do? And they decided to pray. And so that's what they did. They prayed with the thunder crashing and rain pounding down. This group of five college students, and this was back in 1806, they actually prayed that God would wake up the, the students in the United States and England and give them a burden for global missions. And there's a lot of twists and turns, of course, after they prayed this prayer. But if you trace this, uh, this event, forward, scholars will tell you this was the birthplace of what's called the student volunteer movement. By the time this movement was over, over 20,000 uh, college students from both sides of the Atlantic gave their lives to go overseas as foreign missionaries. It's one of the greatest mission, missionary movements in history. And it all happened in this little stack of hay. As it just, it just goes to show that when we have this, when we have a group of people that come to God together in agreement, where we've all just, we decided, okay, this is something that we know God cares about. When that happens, man, Christ is there. And if Christ is there, anything is possible. And so just thinking ahead for us, you know, just reflect on your own. A lot of you have been following God for a long time. Have you ever seen God move powerfully in response to prayer? I have, man. There's nothing more thrilling than seeing that. And let's see that this year. Why don't we pray together in agreement for what God wants all year long? I'm talking about, you know, get a group of people doesn't have to be a large group, just two or three. Sit down and think about what God really is passionate about and agree to pray for those things and stay with it. Imagine if we did that in 2021. It's not hard to go figure out what God's into. You know, you can read in Ezekiel, he says he's into finding the lost and binding up the brokenhearted. Why not go to God as a group and just say, Lord, Put people like this across our path. Give us the opportunity to represent you and to draw people that are hurting and brokenhearted and to build them back up and bring them to you. You know, another thing that God's passionate about is setting his glory among the nations. What about coming together and just saying, Lord, we want the opportunity to help someone from a different part of the world 
realize how great you are and understand your offer of salvation through Christ. Lord, give us the chance to do that this year. What about praying that? Or what about love and unity among believers? You know, Jesus talked about how when Christians in community come together and there's real love and unity, it says that people are drawn to God, that there's something about seeing that. And you'll see this in testimonies, uh, like at a baptism, people sharing, how did they become a Christian? It's because they saw this. And so God wants that. Why not tell God, Lord, in our group, I pray the love and unity would be so potent that people that we know that are far from God would be drawn to you. Or here's something we know that God's passionate about, making disciples. He, you know, Christ, before he left, that was one of his final parting commands was to go do this. So what would it look like with a group of people in agreement saying, Lord, increase the quantity and the quality of prayer and of, of discipleship in this group? That would be sweet. These are the kind of things that God wants. And when people come together in agreement and pray for those kinds of things, we will see things happen. And as we're praying, just remember this word from Jesus. Let this word of encouragement stay with you. If you ask me anything in my name, he says, I will do it.